Hey, what's up YouTube? You are watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I am here with two, actually four members of the Austin Air Operations for Austin Energy here in Austin, Texas. Uh, they're gonna tell us about how they're using drones, why they're using drones, and what benefits the city is getting from it. So stay tuned and check it out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Ready, Set, Drone, I really encourage you to hit the subscribe button. And I also encourage you to uh, check out Austin Energy online because they have a lot of cool stuff going on in their social things. I'll put the links in the description. But before I get into all that, I wanna introduce you to Rick and Chris. Rick and Chris, like I said, are with the Air Operations Group at Austin Energy. You guys just give us a quick introduction of yourself and what you do there. My name is Rick. Um, I've been with Austin Energy a little over 30 years. I work in the IT department uh, uh, while also flying the, uh, the UAVs for our uh, drone inspections at Austin Energy. Uh, my name's Chris. I've been with Austin Energy almost two years now, and I am a geospatial analyst and uh, also a uh, 107 pilot uh, for the air operations team. Awesome, awesome. So let's start with the beginning. Uh, how did you guys? Um how did you guys get into, Chris, let's start with you, because it sounds like uh, you, you started uh, in the military. How did you get into flying drones? Uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, we had access to a, a Dragonfly drone. That was my first exposure to, uh, to UAVs. And then in uh, grad school, I used uh, Phantom 3 for some environmental projects that we were doing. Right on, right on. And how about you, Rick? Well, actually, when I, when I retired uh, a, few, a few years ago, uh, they brought me back into Austin Energy and I noticed that uh, we were still doing our inspections, our transmission distribution line inspections uh, manually. Uh, we did have a drone, we hadn't expanded it yet. Uh, and I said, you know what, we can move with over here and start doing the inspections with these UAVs. Uh, and uh, once we did that, it kind of expanded from there. Nice, nice. Now I understand uh, there's another gentleman who we're also gonna have in a minute uh, named Mike, who was part of that early group. Um, when you first started that um, idea or that initiative to do the inspections with a drone, what was the reaction from the city? It was slow. It was slow starting. Uh, of course, back then, uh, the UAVs weren't as popular as they are now. Uh, but when you look at uh, the reason why we use them, uh, safety being the number one reason, uh, anytime you don't have to have a man up in a bucket to do these inspections, uh, it's, it's a lot safer. Uh, but the other side of that is also the cost savings. Uh, obviously, doing them manually, it uh, costs a lot more, it's more uh, time intensive, uh, whereas with a UAV, uh, we can sit us out here in this, in this truck, uh, we can get it done in 20 minutes, half an hour. Nice. And, and uh, Chris, what kind, of, what kind of drones do you guys fly? We have uh, Phantom 3, Phantom 4, uh, Inspire, and the Symmetry 600. Wow. Okay, so pretty much exclusively DJI drones. That's correct. Okay. Uh, and as far as the Matrice, tell me a little bit about what's on it, like what kind of uh, accessories and such do you have? Right, we have uh, one of them is set up to have um, uh, dual cameras. One is a FLIR thermal camera, and uh, the other one's a very nice uh, uh, Zmuse. I'm not sure that well. Zmuse, yeah. Zmuse yeah. gimbal. Cool, yeah. cool. Uh, and and uh, Rick, you mentioned that probably your workhorse. Which drone is your workhorse? Uh, the workhorse is the Phantom 4 Pro Plus. Okay, uh, with the screen on it. Exactly, exactly. The uh, the Matrice 600 is great. Dual camera setup, FLIR, like you said. Uh, but it takes so uh, it takes so long to get it up up and going. Uh, it's a lot easier just to send out a Phantom 4. Uh, the camera's great. Uh, the stability's great. Flight time's about the same. Uh, so yeah, most of our work is done with the Phantom 4 Pro Plus. Okay. And so as far as um, on a day-to-day -day basis, what are you, you mentioned uh, line inspections? Um, what other types types of work are you guys doing with the drones on a daily basis? We, well, we do, uh, like, like I said, the distribution trans transmission line inspections. We also do uh, site assessments. Okay. Uh, like we'll go out to our, our, our plants, we'll do uh, vegetation encroachment. Uh, when bad weather hits, uh, Austin, of course, we're out there looking at storm, storm damage. Uh, we have assisted FEMA before in the past. Uh, and then we do some side jobs um, for the mayor, uh, for the VPs there at Austin Energy. Okay. Uh, whenever they're putting together some kind of uh, uh, some kind of presentation that, that they need videos. Sure, sure. It always. I mean, they say a picture's worth a thousand words, yes, and an aerial picture is probably worth a million if it's if it's done well. Um, so, in terms of in terms of the um, benefit to the citizens of Austin, you know, if, if they're watching right now and they're saying, "All right, I, I get it. They use drones, but but you know, I, they're using my dollars to do that." Um, Chris, what would you say the benefits of using drones are? I know safety is one of them and maybe cost savings, but can you elaborate a little bit? 
Well, we want to be the front runners in technology, so I think it's important that the public sees us out there using this equipment properly and that, once again, safety is the paramount concern for us. As long as we can keep people from getting injured, if we can just fly up a drone versus have someone go up into a bucket. And when you say safety, you're not talking about safety in the way you fly the drone, because of course you do that. You Absolutely. guys are all certified drone pilots, but but you're talking about safety as in risky jobs that don't have to be done by an employee anymore. That's correct. These are high voltage lines, uh, very dangerous work. So anytime we can limit that risk, um, that's a positive. Cool. And Rick, as far as uh, your experience with the public, um, do you find that people are enthusiastic about the use of drones? Is it something that people, do, you know, to get people asking you questions about them or tell me a little bit about that? We get several questions. Uh, we do a lot of events at schools uh, and it's all positive. It's all positive. Once we explain uh, why we're out here uh, doing these inspections, uh, the fact that we can do more inspections in a shorter amount of time uh, makes the public a little more enthusiastic about us being out, out, out there. Uh, the fact that we're trying to main, maintain the, uh, the grid, uh, make sure that the power stays, stays on, trying to catch these problems before they actually, you know, actually occur. If, if we went back, if we all went back 10 years or five years and we looked at where things are today, if we were looking forward, we'd be like, wow, I can't believe that the drones can do all that. And there's so much control and there's so much, you know, with the live transmissions of HD video, in some cases, 4K video. Where do you guys think um, this market's going in terms of industrial use, um, UAVs and industrial use? Do you guys see any uh, anything that maybe wouldn't be obvious to most people about what drones might be used for in the future? Um, I definitely see, Drones are going to be used far more uh, as we move into the future. FAA regulations are getting a lot easier to use. Um, just getting permission to fly now is far easier than it was just two years ago. Okay. Um, so uh, I think any industry that has any type of risk mitigation, asset management, any of those industries, you're going to see drone operations. If they don't already have them, they, they need to get on board with it. And, and Rick, what would you say to any other city uh, employees that are watching right now who maybe aren't employing drones yet? What would you recommend? Well, we have quite a few departments here uh, in Austin that are flying them. Uh, not all departments have them. Um, I would say go out, uh, get your license. Uh, it, it's a great benefit for your department. Uh, like, like I said before, safety, cost savings, they go hand in hand. Uh, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to make a good impact uh, for your department and for the Austinites here in Austin. Awesome. All right, so a minute ago, you got to meet Rick and Chris. Now I'm here with Victor and Mike, who are also part of the air operations team at Austin Energy. Uh, you guys, introduce yourselves real quick, please. I'm Victor Carr with IT Operations, and I work on a lot of the uh, emerging technologies. Nice, how about you? Mike Armstrong, Transmission Construction and Maintenance, uh, Construction Analyst, retired. Nice, so I understand, I understand uh, from the other guys, uh, Mike, that you were instrumental in getting drones to the city of Austin and Austin Energy. Yeah, we bought a uh, Phantom 2 Vision Plus, uh, I believe it was June 2014, at the request of my uh, superintendent. <laughs> All right, so Victor, you're with IT and Emerging Technologies. Yes. Um, I have heard several people uh, talking about emerging technologies, emerging threats as well, uh, not to say that drones are necessarily a threat, but drones are high on people's minds. What, what do you think, where do you think they fall in like kind of the hierarchy of emerging technologies these days? I think they're really hot right now. I mean, it's the thing that it's accessible and you know, anything that's more accessible uh, has higher accessibility. Uh, tends to kind of push the market a little bit. True, true, and, and everybody from professional pilots, professional racers, and guys like you who are doing this to help out a municipality down to hobbyists who are just having fun with it, right? Right. Uh, so tell me a little bit about how you got into drones, Victor. Uh, along the lines that uh, more of the transmission people started actually using them, started coming up with ways of what is the future, what should the future look like for these drones? And what we started to find out is we could actually use them for public safety reasons as well. So we started kind of looking about two years ago with the help of an NSF grant to see if we can actually make technology a first responder. Wow. So that's where that kind of came into play. And I have several use cases that we're looking at to try to actually make that possible. Okay. In terms of the upgrade path from that original Mavic or that original Phantom 2 vision that you had, um, what other drones uh, do you guys have now and, and why did you invest in those particular ones? We went from the Phantom 2 to the Inspire 1. Okay. Uh, stability, uh, better camera. You didn't have to get as close to a structure to inspect it. With the Matrice 600s, we ordered one with the FLIR thermal camera. That will also work on our Inspire 1. 
and you look at a, a mechanical splice or a, a lightning arrestor and they'll develop a heat signature before they fail and that's what we look for a lot in our line inspections we also look at our insulators see if they're tracking uh, hot spots on uh, glass or porcelain bells and uh, that's a key to that they're going to need replaced also if you spot hot bells how do you guys decide who flies on a particular mission like like is it just whoever's available at that time or first come first serve how does that work so I, I if i worked for austin energy i'd be fighting to fly all the time well you definitely have to be uh, license. You have to be a licensed pilot. Part 107. Yeah. And, and we are also working on a training program along with the rest of the city of Austin so that everyone is on a level uh, level set to where when we need someone else to come and fly we can know what to expect. Okay. Okay. So it isn't just you pass the test, it's also you know the practicalities of it. Yes. Okay. But what about um, what about public? Like when the public sees you got guys out flying, um, do you feel like they support the use of these emerging technologies? I'll ask you this one first, Victor. I think when they see what we're actually using them for, I think they do support it. When they look at them actually looking at lines, I think that that kind of bolsters their confidence to say that, hey, Austin Energy is here to keep our power on longer, and actually these things are helping us do that. Nice. And, and Mike, as far as the cost savings or other, other benefits to the city, what do you think those are? Well, safety number one. Uh, it's a whole lot safer to send a drone out to inspect the line than it is to send a crew out. Uh, you're not putting people in the air, you're not having, in some instances on a property line, they got to climb a pole. Yeah. So if you can go out and fly that in 20 minutes, as opposed to getting a crew together, driving out there, setting up, inspecting it, racking up and coming back in three or four hours, then that's a, that's a major safety factor plus cost. Cost savings. Cost efficiency. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. So. Uh, just, you know, in 30 seconds or less, I'll ask each of you, and I'll start with you, Victor, where, what, what do you see the future of, of drones and municipalities as? Where do you think this is going? Well, one of the use cases that I'm working on when I say uh, making them the first responder is uh, use case of a uh, pole. So if a vehicle hits a pole, the IoT device on the pole notifies the drone to automatically dispatch and go and actually get information to send that information to 911 as well as our control room meaning, as well as sending the information that no, no people are involved this happens through iot and and uh i mean there might be people in, in the back dispatch, office yes but but, but this, this is triggered automatically right triggered automatically to wow. where all of the information goes out simultaneously and for the public to be safer so that you're actually cutting the time of someone's life at that point so they're there and they're getting help and we're working with autonomous vehicles with Austin Transportation to actually have a vehicle be dispatched to that area. And all of this happened all at the same time. When, when do you think we'll have our first autonomous drone in the air? I'm working on probably the next two years or three years, depending on when wow. 5G comes around. Man, I gotta stay, I gotta stay in touch with you because I wanna <laughs> see that thing. I'm working pretty fast. So, so uh, and then Mike, what about you? What do you, what do you see this going? With our Inspire One and our infrared, we went out to uh, La Loma Solar Project out there by uh, Kingsbury substation. Uh, did an inspection on it and uh, found several bad panels, uh, some bad cells in some of the bad panels. How can you tell a bad panel? Uh, just visual inspection or is it it's, thermal? Or? It's thermal, yeah, okay. it has to be thermal. Uh, you'll get a heat pattern over that whole panel and then if you have a bad cell, it's going to be a colder spot. If it's a whole bad panel, it's going to be colder than the rest so, of your panels. So in, with the uh, lightning arresters, a hot spot is bad. With the solar panel, <laughs> a the cold, cold spot, spot is bad. bad. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. But, and I got I to gotta say, too, I've never heard the term lightning arrester, but that sounds like one badass <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> it's something that can arrest lightning. I assume it's suppression in case there's a lightning right. strike. Okay. Right. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. All right, so once again, I want to give a big shout out to Austin Energy. If you uh, want to know what a city is doing that is really progressive, the city I've lived in since 1987, check out Austin Energy on YouTube, check out Austin Energy on Facebook, as well as on Twitter. These guys are doing some really cool stuff with the drones and they're doing it in a safe way. So I appreciate them being here with me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment below and I'll also ask these guys to check the comments and maybe uh, answer questions if anybody has them. Uh, and if you really want to know more about drones, please subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.